Thank you. Thank you for having us. Can I, is it okay to eat? No, actually, you know what? You will want and No, it's cat. We knew you were coming. Oh. Oh, it's mustard. Thank you. Thank you were coming. I mean, no, glowy is fine. Great. Oh, wow. So just, wow. Okay. <laughs> thank um, you. I did thank look, you. Uh, the restaurant. So thank you. Have we got a surprise for you? Oh. I say you're looking for shows. And uh, I mean, maybe this is a little. A couple uh, of showmans. Off the beach show, path. Showwomans uh, over here. We got something. But, uh, so, if you're ready. Uh, yeah. We've, got, we've, yep. we've, we've got a little pitch for you. Normally we wouldn't, but you twisted <laughs> our arm, Thanks. you know? You asked, so here we go. Here it is. Okay. Okay. Just wait there. <laughs> I'm not looking for shows, but it's no. okay. Sorry about it. No, no. <laughs> I think Moses will take this one. I think they're changing. Rip it, rip it. So rich. 2017. I already took mine off because I love thongs. <laughs> right. Here we go. 1947. 1947. All right. The Black Dahlia. They made a movie better. Died. Died. So many people died. Also, the Cold War. The Cold War. But you know what? None of those things really matter. Because in 1947. 1947. In any case, the Edinburgh Fringe Festival began as the okay, Edinburgh so, International Arts Festival. Which was like kind of a super snooty festival that I imagine with like monocles and pipes. This is a cigarette, but pipes. And everyone was like, ooh, I hope we have the best of theater and opera. Well, surely I do hope we Ew, get to enjoy the best and of theater. Opera and all mm, the things. Quite. Mm -hmm. But count Love what it. happened instead. Okay, so instead, eight indie companies were like, fuck that. We're going to show up and just do shows. We're going to do shows and we're going to capitalize on all the audiences that are there to see the snooty shows. Mm -hmm. And we're going to do them in places that no one expects. No, they basically were like, you know, there's a lot of people spending a lot of money. I mean, those monocles cost fucking money. Thank so you. let's go to this festival and let's steal some of their audience. Yeah, take them right out from under all the other um. So uh, it wasn't until 1948 that we actually heard the term fringe festival for the first time. Because that guy, ready? Here we go. <laughs> Robert Ryan Kemp. Kemp. <laughs> Robert Kemp. There was a man named Robert, Robert Kemp. Robert Kemp, and he was, okay, so here's what happened. This dude, Kemp, Robert Kemp, Kemp, was like, so there's some cool shit happening on the outskirts of this festival. One might even say the fringe of this legitimate arts festival. And I think, this is a, this is a direct quote, I think that none of is us it? will get to bed because of how cool the fringe is. In, in 1950. No, I'm not singing that part. We're still in 1948. One. Al Capone's been dead for a year. <laughs> I mean, I don't think this is about Al Capone. Well, in any case, yes, Kat's entirely correct. In 1951, everything had built to a point where there were now organizations running the fringe because they realized yeah. that there were more companies showing up every year and suddenly it went from being a weird little act it of went rebellion. went from 8 to 12, and then at 12 they were like, we should make a ticketing system or some kind of structure. And then, the, like, how people think of the fringe, which is kind of an opportunity for you to go from rags to riches, to go from nothing to something. Hmm was this guy. And we don't want to tell you who it is. Very mysterious man. Because you definitely know him. Stood in the shadows. But we don't want to make it a big deal yet. Michael Bay. It's not Michael Bay. Fuck. Okay. So this dude, and he wore a tweed suit. And that was a big deal. Everyone was like, holy shit, this guy's tweed suit is fucking hot as fuck. It is actually, uh, Kat's not over-exaggerating, there were a number of pieces about how much people loved this tweed suit. So this guy was 29. 29. And he showed up on the first suit. day of rehearsal and he was like, oh shit, the director left. Well, that's normal for a fringe. So all of the actors have actually been rehearsing this script that has a shit ton of typos in it. Because he made the mistake of giving his script to a very eager green typographist who literally had a bunch of typos and the actors were pretty committed to the script so they just kept rehearsing the typos. And when he showed up, he's like, the fuck? Oh, right. oh, guys, no, no, I didn't write that. This show opened, and critics were like, 
I don't know what the fuck to make it. Also, for the record, it opened as a lot of friend shows to to. Well, actually, this is better than most friend shows now. To two reviewers and just a random no, guy. Six reviewers and a punter. And of those seven, some people were like, I don't know, there's a lot of words. And other people were like, oh, they repeat a lot of shit and they go back and forth and it's weird. And then one guy whose name was Brian? No. Ronald Bryden. Bryden! Uh, Bryden. Who wrote for The Observer basically said, hey, you know what, this this is really good. And uh, luckily for him, um, his predecessor at The Observer was a gentleman by the name of Kenneth Tynan, who is one of the most notorious critics, as well as one of the best directors of all time, who took over the National Theatre. So basically he was like, hey Kenneth, uh, so listen, I, uh, I really like this play, it's really weird, maybe you'd like it. And Kenneth Tynan said, I like it. And so it went to the National Theatre and used the costumes from the, the 1963 Eastern production Space of Hamlet. Yes. Totally used those costumes. Oh, but Kat, That's what possible production could use Hamlet costumes? Who is this mystery man? You know, I think I think he's the real thing. David Mamet. Nope. Did he love rock and roll? He loved rock and roll. Did he go to Utopia? Yeah. Anyway, the point is, it's Tom Stoppard. Tom Stoppard. It was Tom Stoppard. 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 Rose and Cranston Gildenstern are dead, and that started at the fringe, which is amazing when you think about how many other things, in even in terms of Toronto theater, that have started there, like the Drowsy Chaperone and Kim's Convenience. And that's the fringe dream. You can start out as a weirdo wearing tweed with a script with a shit ton of typos, and you can write one of the seminal works of the 20. First century. Right, anything. You can do anything. You can fail as hard as you want. And that's the spirit and of the original Fringe in 1947. And maybe you'll see the next Tom Stopper. Well, I don't need to. I'll just see the first Cat Sandler. <laughs> <laughs>